No, you're exactly right. So it's inevitable. The U.S. economy is going to crash. Look, you don't want it to happen. I don't want it to happen. But when you look at the mathematical facts behind what's been going on for the last 20 years, unfortunately, it looks like it's going to happen. Let's dig in a little more. Welcome to Ron's Basement. Thank you for joining me today. I don't want this to happen. Look, I'm an American through and through, born in 1970. I was in kindergarten celebrating the bicentennial, if you remember that. I've got pictures of myself with a little flag, a little five-year-old Ronnie from Ron's Basement. Everything seemed good. But the reality is that over the last, let's say, 20, 25 years, uh, our leaders, okay, and I do blame it on our leaders, have allowed our Fed, or in, were in cahoots with our Fed, they've screwed everything up to the point of no return. Now, I could be wrong, and I, in some ways, hope I am wrong, because I have kids, and I don't like to think that they're going to have to pay for the mistakes of their parents and grandparents but from a mathematical perspective it almost seems inevitable right i mean 30 trillion dollars in debt a government that still spends significantly more money than it brings in every year um, and we're a country that seems to be losing uh stature let us say on the uh stage of international relations okay now again I don't like this. Uh, uh, I don't like what's happened in the last 20 years. And the best analogy I can come up with is America has been living like a household that was subsidizing its spending with credit card debt. That works for maybe two or three years or maybe five years or whatever. But eventually the debt gets so big and the ability to generate additional income to service that debt uh, it's just not there, so things fall apart. The household falls apart, right? Um, America has been on a pain avoidance strategy for the last 20 years. It started with uh, Greenspan. I remember them talking about him kicking the can down the road, okay? Well, then came uh, uh, Bernanke. Bernanke, you know, uh, he, he didn't just have a can to kick. It had kind of grown more into like a wash pail. So he kicked the wash pail down the road. Next, you had Yellen. And, you know, by that time, the, the wash pail had grown into a five-gallon bucket. She kicked that. She's kind of a short, stout little thing. So she was able to kick that five-gallon bucket down the road. Now you've got Jerome Powell. And that poor guy... He's got a 55-gallon drum he's trying to kick, and it's pretty darn hard for anybody, no matter how big you are, to kick a 55-gallon drum, right? Maybe it's a barrel of oil he's trying to kick, which I think is somewhat of a parody or symbolic in certain ways. Nonetheless, it's going to be time to pay the piper for the United States. Mother Nature and natural market forces always, always went out. These actions that were taken over the last 20 years by our politicians and by our central bankers to avoid pain have created massive distortions in our economy. Massive distortions that are insustainable, unsustainable, not sustainable, okay? eventually gravity, mother nature, and the rules of math win. Now, what does that mean for my old friends who invest in silver and gold? What that means that as things unravel, and they will unravel, okay, gold and silver will maintain their value as they always have for 5,000 years. You'd think that if they've maintained their value for that long, that if the U.S. system and economy goes through some major, major changes, that they'd continue to maintain their value, at least for our lifetimes. Hey, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you 
you you being here in Ron's basement with me if you'd like to subscribe you can do that right here and until next time be well